here on zero block 30 and young Catherine is back on full-time duty here Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! we made yeah. it through eight long weeks thanks to all of you who are still here we appreciate <laughs> it Kate's back and so since she's back we're gonna she's gonna read the rounds what do we got today? I'm gonna read the rounds and also everybody should know the three of us are all in the same room together for the first time in over a year chaps came up to New York City so. First time in like 16 months. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy the last time. time we were all together was in Washington, D.C., where we were interviewing some Congress folks. Oh, man. And that was what, right what when. Trip. Yeah, that mm-hmm. the train ride back <laughs> is when people had started talking on the train about COVID and coughing and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, what is this everyone's talking about? My wife was texting me the entire time that we were there. She was like, you need to be careful. This thing is really popping off. I'm like, I'm not. It's the fucking flu. I'm not yeah. worried about this thing. I, when it first started, I was like, guys, it's not going to get here. I'm mm-hmm. not worried about it. Like, yeah. why are you talking about it? It's not a thing. Oh, and it was a thing. A few moments later. Yeah. <laughs> Three hours later. But who would have thought? And also, last night, Captain Khans and Chaps came over to my apartment. And oh, yeah. Met- There's something I want to address about that what? real quickly. Wow. Wow. I'm getting torn up online. People saying, oh, looks like someone's never held a baby before. That could not be the fur- furthest thing from the truth. There are reports saying you weren't supporting the neck. Oh, baloney! My my arms are big enough that his head was well supported. I didn't want to say anything, but the baby's arm was <laughs> dangling precariously yeah. for a long time. How did he sleep last armpit. night? Struggled. He struggled and it's concussion like syndrome. Right, exactly. Well, it's because he slept so much in my arms <laughs> and then in Chaps' arms because yeah. we, we just rocked him right to sleep. That's true. They did come over and they got to meet the baby and have. It was just so great. We all finally got to catch up after more than a year. Or so. We're back, back in the New York group. <laughs> we are back in the New York group. Thank you, Ace. Yeah. And I'm excited because it's a big day. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Like what? Well, round number one, summer is fast approaching, so we've got some beach bod tips for you straight from the icy cold Arctic. <laughs> oh, okay. Brr, that's one hot body, according mm-hmm. to Arctic troops. Mm-hmm. Round number two, pre-boot camp, boot camp. The Marine Corps is considering a new chill-out period for recruits before the screaming begins. Are we going to lose the yellow footprints, folks? Mm, I don't know. I, before oh. we even get started, when I read that one, there's not many things that I have, like, the old school vet ro- reaction. Like, yeah. not my beloved core. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is bullshit. Okay. <laughs> it's getting a little soft. Uh, round number three. Birth control that any gender can wear on their face. If you're in the military, you've seen them. Birth control glasses. Am I right, folks? Oh, I thought you were going to say face condoms. I, was just, no, I, face I thought condoms. you were just going to say some of our faces. Dental dams. I'm not. I'm still. I don't know if I've ever seen a dental dam in the wild. No, no me neither. Just in like books and stuff. But if you wanted to go down to Walgreens and pick up a dental dam, you can't do it. You can't find them. You do they have them at Walgreens? I've never looked. I've always said you're just going right maybe, on that. Maybe thing. after we get done here, I'm going to go down there and see. Find a dental give band. it a give it a little. I imagine it's just like sticking your tongue through a balloon. <laughs> I think it's just a piece of plastic you put on the old. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, now that I've, uh, I'm is the, is the correct word betrothed? I'm betrothed. Yeah, you're betrothed. Right. I'm betrothed. Engaged. Uh, I have no desire to learn about any of that stuff. Oh no, me yeah. and Big Cat talked about it about three years ago. We're back in on condoms. Why? Wow. Yeah, well, it's no just fuss, like no must. yeah, like you just less to clean up for the lady. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, it's like throwing. Like, why would you? To me, it's kind of like just throwing your random old bananas and lettuce and stuff into a trash can without mm. any type of bag. Yeah. It's just easier to get all the rubbish out. If you <laughs> the rubbish. Well, long story short, <laughs> round number three, submariners are testing out new glasses. Can we start calling cum rubbish? <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah. I, I gotta tell you, I think that's more professional. Oh rubbish on my tits. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. Uh, <laughs> Got a bunch of so rubbish on my clover tattoo. Something that we should let you in on <laughs> yeah. is without you, he and I have tended to go further into tangents okay. than, than before. Okay. It's been an interesting ride. I haven't minded it. I've enjoyed it, actually. But just so you're prepared to understand that when we're 20 minutes in and we still haven't even started, really, that's why. Okay. Mm. A lot of rubbish. <laughs> yeah, Indeed. so much yeah. rubbish. If that's the case, I guess mm. I have a dumpster baby now. The whole <laughs> rubbish mouth. Boy, yeah, indeed. 
<laughs> All right, let's get serious now. No more laughing. Round number four, Israel-Palestine is huge in the news this week as tensions explode in violence, and we've got the definitive rights versus wrongs of the story. Just kidding, we're not knowledgeable on that subject in any way, so we're not touching it with a 10-foot pugil stick right now until we better understand it. Anyways, a CEO and, and I'll just be honest, mm. I'm never going to understand it. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I, I was uh, engaging in a conversation with my future father-in-law this past Friday night about this very topic. And as I'm talking about it, I realized I don't know that much about it. I know like kind of the broad brush strokes, but not enough that I would consider myself even barely knowledgeable. And this on is one of those issues where there is no like fair and balance. Like right. you get it. Every single media company will have like a, a bias. On it. Yeah, like you can't have like just a normal take about what's going on because you'll read one thing from one source and another. So we're just like, fuck that. We're not talking about it. Yeah. If you're an expert and you, uh, we you don't want you on moderate, either. We don't want no, you. We, we don't, really don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we're not going to be the ones. If you're coming to us for your take on that, well, keep we're on. We're going to be talking about rubbish and sperm and stuff. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, a CEO in the Space Force just got fired for his political comments regarding Marxism in the military. And we'll give you the skinny about the real political climate among our armed forces. Ah, uh, just ah, kidding again. 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 Your goose. We're not going to uh, do well, that. No. It's not about that either. Uh, I got too much mush brain to deal with that kind of thing. We're just going to talk about some new night vision goggles that have come down the pipe. You know, mm-hmm. we got a pretty cool, a uh, lot of buzz online because it looks neat. So. Wait, did you guys hear about my idea? No. Okay. So there I am laying in bed, and Alex, she likes to go to bed much earlier than I do, uh-huh. and sometimes I like to read. But if I turn on a night time, like a lamp next to the bed, it's too much light, and right. it's keeping her up, and then that's a whole thing, and it's a whole to-do. Yes. Glasses that are night vision. Night vision readers. Or what night about just audiobooks? Glasses. No, ah, no, I'm not right. giving in to audiobooks. I'm not giving in to Kindle. I read the old school way. I, I turn love the pages. audiobooks because they're better readers than me. Like when, <laughs> and do you read as 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 well as you read out loud or lack thereof? Is that how you read in your head too? No, because I use the FDR voice, so I nail it every time. <laughs> okay. Like it's just like FDR is reading me <laughs> Harry Potter in my own brain. <laughs> I I like it because if I am reading something and then I go talk about a character, the audiobook is going to nail the pronunciation. Mm. Like right, you, I read in Harry Potter. I was reading it Hermione yeah. for, for years. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's Hermione. Hermione, right? Right. right. Buckbeat. Yeah, glad, um, glad we got that out of the way. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> is that mm. is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh that's wait, it, and yeah. we also have because we are doing stuff with BetterHelp. It is the Mental Health Awareness Month here, not just here, but I think everywhere. Everywhere. Really? Everywhere. Well, yeah. I can't say for sure they're doing it in Senegal. Do you guys know? No, no, I haven't I checked know. yet. Uh-uh. We'll Google that after the right. show. But we also have, we took to Instagram and Twitter last week to ask you guys if you wanted our non-expert opinions before we send you to actual experts about military health issues. We're going to do that. We're going to do that somewhere in the show. We'll just find a spot to put we'll just it. weasel it in there. Yeah, we'll just weasel it all in there. And For all sure. the today's show is going to be brought to you by our good friends at 3Chi. 3Chi is the leader in Delta-8 THC products. It's not CBD. It's actual THC. They're Delta-8. THC products and they are the best in the biz. They are formulated by a biochemist. They have gummies. They actually, I just got in the mail, Rice Krispie treats, brownies, cookies, and these things are 50 milligrams Mm. per. Like, so the normal gummies that I take to sleep at night, it'll be, it's a 25 milligram gummy and I buy it off half. I just do half. Mm -hmm. 50. If I took 50 milligrams? Your tweets would be super weird. I don't know if I could figure out how to tweet. Yeah, yeah, I think his fingers might stop working. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that might be a better option than some of the things that I tweet late at night whenever I'm 3 chi goofing. Could if be. you want to take advantage of that, go to 3 um, chicom and the promo code ZBT2021 to receive 5% off your checkout. So many people have reached out to me and been like, thanks so much for recommending this. It is awesome. All the employees that are here at Barstool, well, everybody loves it. Last night when you guys were, were out on my patio and we ended up just not doing the show or anything, we ended up just talking about it, how much <laughs> you love 3G. So it's mm-hmm. like legit real deal thing. Yeah. yeah, it is. And I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about get going with the actual show. All right. So I'm back in New York, first time traveling, going through. And it wasn't as weird as I thought. You know, no. like you think whenever, I imagine it's like, going back to high school reunion where the first like five minutes is weird Mm -hmm. and then after that it's like oh yeah i know these people after you rip the fifth shot you don't care anymore (laughs) right you just don't (laughs) care at all right and it was the only part that's bullshit 
I don't want I want you to hand me my Bischoff cookie. Yeah. I don't want it in some bag like I like I'm a fucking toddler. Right. Like I just got like done playing snack bag. Right. Yeah. I don't want that. I mm-hmm. would I prefer when the flight attendants back in the old days when they used to chew it up and baby bird it into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. I miss that. So I think what's interesting <laughs> <laughs> about traveling because I, 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 I traveled at you last summer I was going places. And oh, what a bragger! Brag. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I just had to. You know, sometimes we summer up in Nantucket. It's not a earlier. Big deal. He said oh. he. I smelled dead mouse in one of the office rooms. And he said he didn't know what that smelled like. Another nope. sick brag. Wow. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Um, but I think anybody who's traveling or has been traveling in the last year is, is a more bad or less person. No. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Is more or less comfortable <laughs> with it. So I don't think yeah. you're really going to run into too many issues. Like if right. you were uncomfortable with getting on a plane, you just would found a way to not travel. So anybody getting on a plane, I think by and large is comfortable with being in places and spaces where there's other people in close proximity. Yeah. Yeah. The weirdest part was the woman that was sitting beside me. She clearly shit mid-flight. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I think that she's right in your britches. No, not in her britches. She was gone from her seat for like 20 minutes. Oh, okay. That's the worst on a plane because you know everybody knows they were in yeah. there for a while. The worst time ever for me on a plane. There was this woman that was enormous mm, and she perhaps. she i'm not gonna say she waddled from the back okay. up to the lavatory mm-hmm. the head mm-hmm. she, that she went in there i had to go in there after non-flusher like it looked what? it looked like a pringles can sitting on the toilet yeah it was mm-hmm. just enormous that's not nice and not being able to flush it and somebody walking in right behind you has got to be Someone's power in, move though. Well, that's somebody's a power worst, move. worst night. Yeah, you're either a sick fuck or that's like your worst nightmare. Yeah. Or that's like you're like the wet bandit. So that's your calling card. <laughs> One of my older yeah. daughter's friends came and spent the night, and Kelsey came in and she was like, "Dad, um, I want you to be quiet about this, but my friend clogged the toilet." Ooh, like was, that's the worst. And she doesn't want to tell you. At, being a 14 or 15 year old girl <laughs> oh clogging a toilet and having to see my tattooed bearded ass bring the <laughs> industrial plumber like, don't worry about it. I'll take care of this shit. Yeah. I'll put that thing's going down. Nightmare. Fuel. I mean, as a 36 year old man, I'd be embarrassed to clog a friend's toilet. <laughs> I clocked one at a Hoboken St. Patrick's Day party where the smoking, you had to go through the bathroom. You know you get, didn't have to say that out loud. To get on the smoking balcony. So all these people were waiting to go through the bathroom to smoke, and I was in there with the toilet, like, overflowing. Oh, no. It was the worst day. I went home alone that night. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, you know what else really clogs up your shitter? Hmm. Uh, uh, health stuff, like when you're trying a new protein <laughs> You got thing that right, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Well, so <laughs> bodybuilding techniques, turns out, are getting mm, – I'm fucking this up. No, it's good. Let's keep, okay. keep going. Yeah, let's, let's, keep let's just let you stew in your awkwardness. Okay. Go for it. We got a story from military.com mm. from John Vandiver about bodybuilding tourniquets and cocoa bean supplements finding their way into soldier toolkits as the Army is looking for ways to keep troops warm in the Arctic. Now, I had read this round as if it was uh, about getting a hot beach body. I misunderstood it completely. Yes. It's yeah, I true. noticed that. I was like, yeah, I sent yeah, you this yeah. story. I'm not sure what this is going on. So idiot. what happened here is they're doing all kinds of Arctic training, which I think it is smart. Now that the war in Afghanistan is winding down. we got to find a new one. They're doing all. I think they are being proactive in the training. Like you're seeing so much more of like jungle climate. The Marine Corps is having a renewed focus on doing stuff like Pacific type of island campaigns, yeah. which I can't imagine when you're actually going to use that type of thing. But they're doing it. <laughs> they're doing Arctic training and all yeah. kinds of shit. And because I think this is going to end up being like it was when I first joined, and which is latter part of 2003, where you didn't have a whole lot of people in leadership positions who had any type of combat experience. Mm-hmm. Like all the people that were staff and CEOs, gunnies, company grade officers, they had zero real life combat experience by and large. And now you have the complete opposite where everything that we know is either mountains in Afghanistan or it is Iraq desert, other climates, everybody's learning about it mm-hmm. as they go, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool. Well, I think the next big frontier is going to be like the arctic areas once we figure out more and more how to harness shit up there and we're digging under the ice and we find the the magic ice gold that's and probably stuff. what that beluga whale from last week was looking yes. at. exactly so they're trying to find ways to keep troops warmer i misunderstood that as troops getting ripped up there and we're gonna share it so anyway <laughs> bodybuilding tourniquets and cocoa bean supplements could find their way into soldiers toolkits as the army looks for ways to keep troops warm in the arctic 
where the service expects more forces to be headed that way. So in plain English, what they're doing here, like if you're a bodybuilder and you want to be more vascular, like that's an ideal look for these bodybuilders is to have all kinds of veins and shit popping out everywhere. So they'll do tourniquets, almost like you would do if you were getting your blood drawn, mm -hmm. where you wrap it out and it'll sit there for a minute so then you get more vascular and it causes yeah. the blood to flow rapidly to that one spot. That's what they're doing here. But I think that they already had more stuff in their toolkit where they didn't have to do that. Yeah, it's nutty. They're calling it thermal toughness. So it kind of reminds me of McMath. We had this instructor. For those who know, it's like Marine Corps Magic Karate. That whatever. <laughs> That's anyway. the official name. Magic Karate. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You are now a black belt in Marine Corps Magic Karate. But we have this staff sergeant <laughs> who would just be like, everybody line up. And he would just kick us really hard Body all hardening. the time. Body yeah. hardening. <laughs> Wait, yeah. wait, wait. It's where legit. Where did they kick you? Like, I believe you, but where did they our kick legs, you? Our thighs. Our, our sides, oh, okay. Let's just, so if you have, if you're not going to watch the video, go to YouTube, watch the video. Do you remember what you would do to for forearm body hardening? Do you no, remember? No. Uh, oh, well, you're going to have to okay, show us. I'll show cons. Let's, let's move the mic back, see if we can go. Okay. Because uh, I don't, I don't know. What they're doing. I don't know about hitting cons somebody that's eight weeks table. postpartum. So you have like, in the body oh, yeah, hardening. Yeah, you hit your arms together. Yes. So yes. you'll sit there in training and you'll just go like this and you'll slam uh, arms uh, into we people over and over you again. You can hear them slamming until, and like, their And you'll armies. walk back from you'll walk back from training like bruise the fuck up. Yep. And then you also do it with legs. So you'll stand there, somebody will kick you as hard as they can over in the and thighs. Over and over. Then you kick them. And the theory is that you'll eventually get used to it yes yeah It'll and it works develop a callus. It, well it's exactly. kind of like football yeah. like you're not in football shape but by week eight you're not going to get as hurt as you do in spring practice because yes. your body is used to it well this, this staff sergeant would kick us so hard we would have his boot laces imprinted through our it. camis on the thing <laughs> I and people say, were getting hurt and it wasn't i nice. was like sadistic this is uh, this sounds fun i will admit it is fun yeah and oh this definitely God. sounds like something that people drunkenly were doing anyway. Oh my like, God! You yes. know what? Yeah. We no, should make this not, real training. No, not doing it. You're doing it because you learned it, and then you're like, "Dude, it's working. Yeah. I don't feel shit." It's, well, yeah. it's because you're on your eight shot of Patron in the barracks. That's right. the reason why you don't feel anything. Right. But there's something about the look in somebody's face. If you dead like them, did you guys play that oh, game when you're yeah. like driving your knee into yep. their thigh? Yeah. Yep. The look of pain on somebody's face mm -hmm. when they're going through something like that, they're gonna get over with quickly. Brings me such intense joy. Yeah, <laughs> I just love it. And you know when you I caught him just right, and it's like, ooh, that was a good one. Oh yeah, and we would do liver shots too. Is the best thing oh, ever. Yes. Oh my god, there's nothing Taste. better. Sitting there with a coffee and a smoke pit. Yeah. <laughs> mom, 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 <laughs> mom. Yeah, we used to do body harding kidney shots too. Oh, like yeah. turn around, boom, and you would only have like you only get like two or three inches to hit them. But you can crumble somebody with a two to three inch kidney shot. And then shot. if you do, and they're like, <laughs> Mom, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I can't breathe, <laughs> Gunny, I need the torment, please. I'm serious, where is he? Oh, my God. I'm getting better, I'm fine. I'm, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm not being a bitch, yeah. I'm totally fine. So anyway, long story short, that's thermal toughness. Yeah. Essentially, they're trying to do that too. It's like body hardening for your veins. So you don't succumb to frostbite and hypothermia. See, and when That's I first cool. saw this, I thought, I don't know what the non-offensive version of this term is. Like, if there is one, where Native American burn. Like oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, right. if you just grab yeah. somebody's penis skin. and give it the old... The old give, for, right. give it the old... First hand -do -do. job I ever gave <laughs> accidentally did that. <laughs> no, no. Can you imagine if that was your actual... Like what you thought, like that you needed to do. You have to like rub it out like it's an empty can or tube of toothpaste. And you have I to know his it full out. Christian name. Say I it. would love say to it. find him. Say it, you coward. Say it. <laughs> say Be it. brave. You're I'll a U.S. Marine. It. Say it. <laughs> Joey A. I'll say that. Joey Asmuth. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> Joey Arbuckle. If you're out there and, and you're the one who got the Carolina squeezer, please come on the show. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, they're they're trying. It's called a. My first South Carolina squeezer was from Michelle Ryan. There you oh, go. Very nice. See, look at me. See, see how easy. <laughs> see how easy. Yeah. So yeah. just say it. Yeah. Anyways, weightlifters <laughs> also use it when they're trying to get bigger biceps, like get that bulge going. Mm -hmm. So like before a like a, a competition where they're all tanned up on the thing, yeah. they'll and do so those do TikTok kind of stars tourniquets. when they yeah. try to crush eggs with their biceps. I'm like, yes. I'm just built different. Yeah. Just recently rewatched uh, Pumping Iron, the documentary oh. with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Have you ever seen that, Kate? No. Oh, yes, it's like coming. The yes. pump is like coming, Yes. Says. Oh, rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The pump yeah. is like rubbish. Right. Yes. Exactly. It's a rubbish pump. Rubbish pump. 
But they're saying there was, was there like a point that. to that story, Cons? Or you no, just, just to some bodybuilders, you know, <laughs> like, you know what? I watched that recently. That's a pretty interesting look into that world. Well, they're also saying supplements. They're looking at different supplements that could increase blood flow to your hands and fingers, improving dexterity in the cold. Because say we do get into an Arctic battle with like Russia or whatever, mm. if your hands are frozen, it's hard to pull that trigger, my friend. Dude, I didn't even that, think about we that. were talking about earlier, like some of the things that we want to talk about later. That's what happened in the Korean War. Like mm -hmm. Korean War, whenever you come, like if you look at a lot of Korean War veterans that were in the Chosen Reservoir, mm -hmm. they removed their own fingers because they they had gloves on that were like essentially mittens at the time. They didn't have like yeah. the technology that we do now. And in order to have their fingers straighten off the trigger, they had to have a finger exposed. So they would cut a hole in their glove. Once that finger would get frostbite completely through, they would cut that finger off and move on to the next on one. It's just nuts. My late great uncle was in the Frozen Chosen, and his stories from that Some are, are fucking insane. Incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, yeah. So just they're keeping trying it light. To yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to update cold weather injuries and deal with cold weather injuries in advance on that. I'm looking forward to the day they give us a shot that just. It's because they make wetsuits that have like, it's like a heated blanket. So mm -hmm. it's not just a wetsuit. There's like an electric system going through it that, that actually warms you up like an electric blanket for cold weather You surfing. can buy those on Amazon for like 50 bucks. No. Yeah. And like there's different types of construction crews that will use them. Yeah. Like the 20 volt batteries that I have in like all my power tools. Yeah. They have one, you could stick one of those in the pocket, like DeWalt makes one, and you could stick it in your pocket and it warms up and then you just switch out the battery, charge it for another one, and it's like a heated yeah. blanket that you can wear all day long. Why That's don't they just cool. do that? If they were gonna either turn a kit or give money. me a heated blanket I had shirt. some ideas that were gonna be cheaper. Okay. Why not Come make on. a poncho liner jacket that you can have different, like three or four different pouches for MRE heaters. Mm. Get them right. wet, put Cover it in there, have the steam. MRE heaters. And heat your food at the same time. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would end up burning somebody. Oh, for sure it would. Oh, but that's okay. That's yes. the military for you, though. I mean, you don't think somebody is realistically going to keep this bodybuilding tourniquet on for too long? Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, somebody's going to lose an arm mm -hmm. because well, of this. Another way to stay warm is breathing can keep you toasty sometimes, too. If you just go, mom, if you just You can't concentrate on being super cold if you can't breathe. I'm sweating doing that right now. So, yeah, maybe hitting somebody... And yeah, I was going to suggest just putting on more clothes, but I guess that will run into Boring. issues with your dexterity and mm. your ability to move and maneuver. Mm -hmm. I think the MRE jacket has some. MRE jacket. Mm. It does. Something to think about. Yeah, and imagine that, that goes back to, you know, what we were talking about the other week about keeping like an Egg McMuffin warm in your underpit. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just keep various mm. snacks warm in your jacket. But then yeah. you might end up with maggot tits. Ooh. Right. Nobody <laughs> Can't wants have that. that. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. So we'll keep you updated on warm, keeping bodies warm in the cold. Also, they could do a nudie pile. Mm. Yeah, they yeah, could. Cause, wait, can I ask a Tell question me real quick? Yeah. Mm. Can I ask a question? Yes. Say I'm in a, uh, I'm out in the cold yes. somewhere, and I have, I've made like a couple twigs tent, and I'm with one other person. In the movies and stuff, you always find them as like the big joke. They're naked huddled together at the mm. night, because supposedly that keeps you warmer than if you're huddled together with your clothes on. Is that true? No, I think it's just a bonding thing, like a mother and the baby, like skin to skin contact. So you just have that much of a deeper relationship with your battle buddy. But do you think like skin to skin I would don't. be warmer than no? Okay, I don't. All right, <laughs> I don't think so. No. I mean, I'm so willing to give a it a try. Me and Annalise will go. Uh, we'll <laughs> go yeah. camp. Please go camp outside and let us know. Okay. <laughs> Can you either of you remember what's what's the coldest you've ever been? The Ooh. fucking military, a field op in the military. One night doing like the late night fire watch shift on some like. Pointless. It was in California of all places too, but we didn't have our cold weather gear or anything. And I had like the two to four a.m. and I'm just like up on this sandbag circle on a hill for no fucking reason. I was getting towards my EAS too, and I was up there. I, I've never been colder in my life. Yeah, uh, I don't know in the cold. I mean, I would say I'm always colder when it's not snowing. When yes. it's wet cold, yes. like that if it's springtime cold, is like yeah. a cold to your bones. If it's like 37 degrees and raining, and you're outside, and it's not ice, it's just wet. That's the worst. And yeah. there's wind yeah. in that, too. Yeah. It's like bone chilling. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? Um, I think my freshman year of high school, uh, I got called up to the varsity to, to just basically stand on the sidelines for the, like, the last couple games. And it's the last game of the season. Was it's this a just a way for you to say that you're on varsity right. as a freshman? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
No, I, I'm just standing there I, the whole game. So I was having sex, right? <laughs> the night, it was the night As I'm prone to do. Some girl just told me I had a big cock. <laughs> I was like, this was thing. And I, was, I pulled yeah. it out like this old thing. And she was like, it's cold out here. Like, this thing doesn't get cold. Wait till you see the tourniquet right. I put uh -huh. on it. It's a sex ring. Uh, yeah. Have you ever used a cock ring, Cons? No, can't say that I have. Hmm. Yeah. Me neither. But it made me think, like, it's ridiculous when you think about what football players wear outside. Essentially, you're wearing a t-shirt and shorts. When the whole with... squad doesn't come fast. <laughs> you know, you got your it takes long a long time to get the rubbish out. I'm just not going to get through this. That's all right. So you're on the varsity football team. <laughs> Trying to play sports when you're cold and actually, yeah, hold, yeah forget that. Oh, that is a weird, like a Patuxent River, Maryland, when I used to play with my pals, and you play quarterback in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I yeah. can't grip the ball. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. That's what Khan said on the yeah. field. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's Coach, like, I can't do it. I'm a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my hands. <laughs> oh, man, I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> We have diners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for round number two, we're going to put in the part about BetterHelp because cons need some. Um, so BetterHelp is this organization. They do fantastic things. Um, they are providing affordable health care that is mental health related to all kinds of different people, including to the listeners of this podcast. If you go to B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash zero, you're going to be able to find a therapist and talk to them online or a phone, whatever works for you. They have video chat sessions with a therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, which I think that that is a great in for a lot of veterans yes. because no matter how much we talk about it, that stigma still exists. Oh, yes. It shouldn't sure. exist, but it definitely does. And having the ability to talk to someone where you can be out in the open, but also feel like you have a little bit of an anonymity mm -hmm. is super helpful. So we took to Instagram and Twitter to ask you guys really the platoon what they thought or the booger platoon i should say booger, <laughs> booger, platoon. Platoon. booger platoon what some of the questions that we have so we're going to go through and i'll get your opinion and i'll share mine as well sure. um the first one and i'm not going to say who they came from because they might want to keep yeah. that a little anonymity, bit anonymity. Like anonymity. Health, yeah basically. so this one the first one and your in your opinion what is the best way to combat the stigma behind men and women in uniform not wanting to seek mental health well, I think it starts with good leadership. I mm -hmm. think as soon as leadership says, hey, because we've had a couple great leaders on the show saying, no, I, I, my anyone in my unit is free to go and it doesn't have any effect on their work, anything like that. I think it starts with good leadership for sure. And if you yourself are seeking mental health help, obviously you can keep it to yourself if you want. But if you are open to talking about it and you notice somebody else in your unit struggling, maybe pulling them aside and being like, hey, I go seek help. It's not a big deal. Um, just people kind of being open with each yeah, other. Yeah, even if you passively mention it. Like, you don't right. even have to do, like, in a group, be like, oh, yeah, later I'm going to therapy because of this. Like, can yeah. you just say it's super in passing? I think that normalizes it's not a, big deal. a whole yeah. shit ton. And, like, just realize you're not the only person. I think the Sergeant Major of the Army did a great thing the other day. He actually was on, did a post with the Veteran with the Sign Instagram guy. Yes. Like, he was on there, and they just held up at number 12. And that number 12 signifies from the Army, from the year... 2009 all the way to 2017 there was 12 people in the entire army who lost their security clearance from mental health related issues just 12 right and when you think about how wide like how many people have been discharged how many people go to the va for all these things it has to be something very very extreme one of those was a general that we actually talked about and he came he was schizophrenic like right, that, that's going to cause right. you to lose your clearance but a majority of things that's depression anxiety related is really fucking normal mm -hmm. like it's yeah. just a human condition to go through that and the more that we talk about that it makes no sense really that for because it is treatable it is it's yes, hundreds it's of years that people acted embarrassed on, about it yeah it is well, and they think as years go by more and more they continue to learn more about it and they right. have more answers available so as you talk more about it there's going to be more information so where you know 10 years ago you might have been hesitant to seek help and now 10 years later not only are you in a better place but there's more information available to you more yeah. uh solutions potentially you could say to, to to help you get that help um and it's just in a better place yeah but yeah i agree with both of you guys just it comes from the leadership so that's tough as a junior individual whether enlisted or officer because you're somewhat at the the mercy of your leadership to have them uh step up that's not to say that you can also set an example 
for those around you, as you mentioned, Chaps, being more forthright and maybe just talking about it in a normal setting. Um, but yeah, don't don't wait for a leader to step up. Be that leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another one that we got, another question. How did you know that you needed help? Um, for me, I woke up in a jail cell. My dad was a pretty clear yeah. sign. Pretty <laughs> like, clear sign. And I think a lot of people have those type of experience where you're alcohol use that is a side effect of depression or PTSD or whatever, like that comes into play. Like a lot of times, like you have that eye opening. I, that's why I'm so open about it now, because if you think about it, like you think I might need, what's the harm in going to see? Yeah. Like people don't, you don't wait or you shouldn't wait to go to the dentist until you need full out fucking dentures. Right. Yeah. You need to go whenever you need a cleaning every six months. Like, so if you take that approach and that's why I like calling them brain dentist. Yeah. Like where you just go in and get a casual cleaning. Do you, <laughs> you talk to somebody, get a little floor out on your yeah, body. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think you're right. I think too many people do wait until that really major event happens, whether it's, you know, drinking too much and getting violent with someone, uh, your significant other potentially, or smashing important relationships. Yeah, or yeah. constantly or being breaking, a dick, breaking yeah. things, or yeah. I mean, name name any of the examples, and you shouldn't wait to, to get to that because then you might be put in a situation where you destroy a portion of your life that maybe is unrepairable, and you don't want that. And the yeah. awesome thing about now and having the internet. You have the ability to go on and essentially give yourself the depression test. Yeah, like, yeah, you can see. Like, like, how am I feeling? And if you're on the borderline scale, just go talk to somebody. Even mm -hmm. or don't me, go. Go, was, go to BetterHelp. I, it was. I knew I needed help long before I sought it, but I didn't seek help until I had actually started. Like, before I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. But I had started to write down like not a plan per se, like a precise, but like. I was starting to figure out the how to, and that's when I was like, you know what? This has gone too far. You need, but you're right. It's like people hit this rock bottom or whatever, and it shouldn't take that. I should have gotten help sooner, but it's so much easier said than done when you're in it. But it is. But, yeah. It's also possible yeah. that you might have an inkling that maybe something's wrong with me, and then you go and speak to a professional, and they'll tell you, well, you maybe thought it was this, but it's actually just something like this, and it's not maybe as bad as you made it out to be for yourself. And here's how we're going to help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. people help dig you out the hole. And the next one we got, and I, this one really hits home with me, psych meds. I've read so much about both sides, pros and cons, thoughts. One, for me, it's not a cure-all. Like, going and getting medicine, right. you're never, it's going to, like, people expect it to be like Motrin. Like, where you have Motrin, you take it, and it's going to be like, oh, my headache's going to be gone in an hour because right. I just took Motrin. It's not that way. It takes three to four weeks, and then it starts to, like, uptick. Now that I've been on steady medication for a long time, I feel the difference. My yeah. family notices the difference. Like mm -hmm. my wife and kids will be like, you're so much more kind consistently yeah. than you were whenever you're off. And you could tell it really, that coupled with counseling is what really helps. Like I don't, yeah. I personally don't think taking depression medicine, taking anxiety medication is going to do as much as the combination of the two. Yeah, a combo is a huge help. I know for me, the medications, the first two different medications I tried over the course of like a couple of years actually did not work for me. And it can be really disappointing. Oh, and dude, it's crushing. It's crushing because you have hopes so high that please God, let this work. But finally, the third one really worked for me. It was really effective. And again, it was a slow roll. But once it did start working, uh, it really did help. And even though the first two didn't work for me, the fact that I knew I was making an effort to try something to get myself out of the hole was enough to start getting me out of the hole too. Like, at least you're trying, at least you're trying, you're not giving up on yourself. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of part of it too. I've never taken any medication uh, for you know one reason or another. I think ultimately for me it was, I understand and appreciate what certain medications can do for people, but for me personally, I wanted to explore other routes so that I wouldn't be beholden to taking medication for mm -hmm. the rest of my life because I just feel like this is something inside of me that I'll always have to deal with no matter what. Uh, but and I can only I can't get rid of it maybe, but I can only hope to deal with it better. So it's been a combination for me of the speaking to someone and through therapy, but then also I've always been uh, pretty pretty devout in my faith as a Catholic yeah. uh, and just. I found that just going to church weekly, because uh, there was a big portion of my life, especially once I got out of the military and I moved uh, back and I was a single guy running around on the weekends, you know, church kind of fell by the wayside. And you know, I used to go from going every week to sporadically Same. here and there. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> never. Definitely on the, you know, the big holidays. But then I, I hated myself for that because I didn't want to be one of those people. 
Um, but I found that as oh, I've gotten older, oh, yes. to you, to you. everybody <laughs> has their own methods. So there's no yeah. wrong or right way as long but as you But so the my combo effort. is the therapy in the church. And that's something that if you do go out and get the actual help, that your doctor is going to be able to help guide yeah, you along that path. Yeah. Like that's not something for us to say, oh, well, well, hey, fucking Steve, you need to be on medication. Like yeah. that's what you yeah. go to actual yeah. doctors for, yeah. which yeah. is great. Um, another one, <laughs> uh, is it, is it normal to feel randomly brain dead? I would say yes. Like <laughs> that is on medication? No, just in general. Oh. Like where and I think that if you're have you can have a bad week, you can have a bad month and sometimes you can bounce back from that. Yeah. But you can also have a bad week that extends out to a bad year. Mm. And oh, yeah. you yeah. there I just am such a firm believer there's nothing wrong with just going to talk to somebody yep. or even like a good pal. Like mm -hmm. if you don't want to take that, get your friends actual advice on what they think too. Unless they're idiots. Well, yeah. but even that, like, I think so often people probably feel, oh, if I go tell my friend about this, they're going to think I'm weird. I think if they're a good friend, they'll just sit there and they'll listen. They might not be able to offer any sort of insight, but just having someone to listen and getting that off of your chest. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be a, you know, a medical professional. Just, just speaking about certain things sometimes, I think it'd be very helpful. And this one is key for me how can i find the right therapist for me googling doesn't help this is like huge trial oh, and error yeah. i've had certain psychologists that i've talked to and i knew right away i don't give a it's fuck like what dating you say. almost it it's really the is same with finding the right medication like when for you me, got the old guy i got an old guy over <laughs> in quarantine i got this yeah. old guy who was like well have you tried dressing up a little better and putting on some makeup and stuff maybe you'd feel better about yourself and i was like i hate you uh next <laughs> what an odd approach yeah, what that an is odd a approach. terrible thing to say <laughs> he should know i'll never look good there I'll was a therapist that i had and he was like i was like hey doctor whoever and he was like oh you can call me josh i was like no you're not josh, mate. i want this to be a little more <laughs> but formal. it is yeah. like dating and again it's so because you're seeking your oftentimes by the time you do seek help you're kind of desperate for like some sort of relief. So it is such a huge blow when it's not the right fit, whether it's medication or your therapist or whatever, but just at least tell yourself, at least I'm doing something, at least I'm trying. Let me try the next thing now. I've already made this first step. I can make another to find another therapist. And we're going to be doing a series of these kind of yeah. talk over the next couple of months or whatever. But I think that it's very important to to remember you're never going to find the answers right away. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be okay with this is a process. Getting you to where you are at in life took a long time for you to get there. And getting you out of that process is going to be a work as well. Like yeah. You're going to learn how to work through it. And I think that that's a it's kind of a beautiful thing to know that you can bounce back. And there's people that are bouncing back all the time. Yeah. And the biggest issue with this stuff, like with BetterHelp, I was really honestly the last two sentences I said, I was trying to find my thoughts again of what I was actually going to say. <laughs> so I just kind of like took a little Michael oh, Scott. Like Rambler sometimes I'll start yes. talking. Yeah, that that's happens. exactly what happened here. BetterHelp and, and other programs like BetterHelp is fantastic because – most of us are busy like if you're an adult if you have responsibilities you are a busy motherfucker mm. everybody like no matter what no matter what job you're working what you're doing you have things that you have to get done for me working here and how like high paced it can be at certain times trying to find the ability to go to my counseling drive 30 minutes across town to get there, drive back, have an hour long appointment. You're talking two and a half hours, three hours of your day right. dedicated chunk. just to it that. It almost yeah. adds more stress. And it, yeah, it's again, like, oh, what am I gonna miss by going to this? I know I need to go. And but, the yeah. VA is doing it too. Like if you have VA healthcare and you, don't have ac and you have access to that, that's great as well, because it's free for you. If you can do it and sign up where you're talking on Zoom or you're talking on the phone or you're talking wherever, you only have to have that actual 50 minutes put out that's a lot easier than three hours takes a mm -hmm. lot of the stress away because again when you're in the depression the simple task of getting to an appointment can seem impossible i used to cancel and oh traffic's and bad now i can't go. i used to ghost mm. and flake on them all the time when i was in it so who knows and, and then it costs you money and you're not getting anything else so it's like oh i just spent, even worse. I just just spent another hundred bucks or whatever so better help that sound and i final thing another therapist that didn't work for me did the video call, I say hello, and the guys on the other end go, hey, it's me, I'm your therapist. Hey, right? just playing outside, it's really cold, I'm trying to stay warm, so I have my gunny, hit me. Better help. Yeah.
yeah, give it a whirl. The last thing yeah, I'll say, CBT. Um, to, you know, to expound on what you said about, you know, it takes time is. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's great. The last thing I was going to say is when I was on varsity as a freshman. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I just uh, I just I had a like, belly full uh, of listen, pancakes. <laughs> listen, I just felt like there was the, 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 the tropes about me were starting to get a little stale. So I had to give you guys a little new material. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys can chew on that one for a few months. But um, <laughs> one of my biggest anxieties is when something is broke and or anything something's out of order something's broke i have to fix it right away yeah and i can't think and focus on anything else until that one thing is fixed i mean yesterday the carpet in my bedroom was bunched up and i had like four other things to do but i couldn't do anything else until i fixed the carpet and Mm -hmm. it was annoying because i had to lift furniture and move it it was a whole big thing but that's just to say that if if i was able to to get through it hopefully you can have that patience to get through it too I understand that can be a really tough task for some people to wait through that time and to go through that uh, tough time of, of finding the right fit. But yeah. just know that the right fit, I believe, is out there for everybody. So just keep driving. And when you do it. find the right fit, the right medication, right counseling combo, I guarantee you, rubbish everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rubbish everywhere. Big time rubbish mm. everywhere. Mm. All right. Let's move on to round number two. What do we have there, Kate? Oh, my God. Pre boot camp. Boot camp. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And yeah. I'm going to sneeze. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> that was awkward. Oh it sucks God. that we can't have Bertie Higgins anymore. That would be yeah. a perfect Bertie Higgins time. Yeah. I know. A nice little. Well, I think we're working on some other things behind the scenes that we might have our own Barstool's very own Bertie Higgins esque person mm. that we could in- inject in some of these situations. Yes. Well, boot camp, especially in the Marine Corps, you fly down there. It's the middle of the night. You get put in a van or a bus or whatever. Head down on your knees, can't look anywhere. All of a sudden, drill instructors run onto the bus. They're screaming at you. You're on the yellow footprints, and bam, you hit the ground running at 100 miles an hour from there. And your little tinny runners, your little tinny runners, your little go fasters, boots, your little go fasters. Well, that might change, my friends. That that might change actually, according to Military.com. Ho- Hope Hodge Sec, one of mm. my favorite Great shows. Names. Uh, on a recent American Airlines flight from Dallas Fort Worth to San Diego. <laughs> Took to the public address system. She went to the boot camp <laughs> and said they were putting you. Oh, God, you sick. On a recent American Airlines flight from Dallas, Fort Worth to San Diego, the pilot got on the PA system and was saying, hey, we got Marines hey. on the plane. <laughs> hey, everybody, I just yeah, can't so myself <laughs> against the stick shift. I can't breathe. Someone, can anyone else fly in this plane? Oh, no. <laughs> pilot broken. <laughs> many, many, many. All this listening, I'm very sorry about this. Do they say mayday on if a plane's going down? Yeah, yeah, sure. You got a mayday call? Oh, God, I'd love to be a mayday guy. Right, wouldn't you? (laughs) Hey, they just tap you in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, we need you. That would be nice. (laughs) Long story short, that part's not even an important part of this story, so Mm. I'm just going to skip ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, Recently, any recruits going to boot camp had to have this two-week waiting period now before they could actually start boot camp because of COVID. So they had to go and then have two weeks quarantine. Oh, yeah, makes sense. And they started kind of using that two weeks to help recruits gain support and acclimation mm. before they started boot camp. They're okay? essentially treating recruits like lumber. So <laughs> when you buy yeah. like new flooring and you have to put it in your house, it's supposed to acclimate inside your house for 48 hours before mm-hmm. you put it in. Oh. So it won't swell or anything like sure. that. So it'll be used to the environment it's in. That's essentially what they're doing with recruits. Exactly. Because right. they would get there. It's almost like daycare effect, which Kate will know eventually whenever mm-hmm. her son goes. Yeah. Your son will get sick. His first first time in in daycare it just happens right like you have all these people with like a germ little germ concoctions a bunch of little amoebas that get together they're screaming at the top of their lungs getting rid of all their little germs and everybody's taking them in at the same time and so you just have a bunch of little sickly fucks running around at first that coupled with the peanut butter shot that some people have an adverse reaction to yeah like you have all kinds of different things so a lot of times your first two weeks in boot camp you're sick of shit wait peanut butter shot is that like they inject you with peanut butter uh, yeah. kind of like it's, it's well whatever it's, it is it's, it's like all these different vaccines and like it's supposed to jump start your immune system okay. and like it's a bunch of different shit it hurts like fuck okay. and yeah like you have the videos are really funny we'll see if nick can find one and put it in youtube where you they give you the shot and then everybody kind of like rocks back and forth yeah but okay. they call it recruit crud the first two weeks again like you said so many get sick and it ends up holding them back they have a lot of respiratory infections pneumonia is common which is so rare in young people and like all these so anyway they're saying this two weeks of slowing things down getting them acclimated 
like really taking the time to give them some rest. Once Soft. They get to I fucking hate Boom. this. I hate this because you need to know. I there's so many parts of boot camp, and explain to those people who haven't been to boot camp. I don't think they're ever gonna get it. It's one of those things that you have to go through it, some form of it, to really understand it. It's you go through a really shitty 13, 12 weeks, whatever, eight weeks, nine weeks, depending on what branch of service you are, six if you're in the Navy. So you have these really <laughs> difficult periods of going through things to know that when you're actually going through some real difficult shit, right. you can do it. Yes. If you have a little tiny baby fever of 100, shut the fuck up and run. Yeah. And I don't give a shit. Yeah. And the fact that we're waiting for everybody to be in tip-top condition – Get that out of my That's face. That's unrealistic. You need to have, I want people with full-blown streptococcus. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I want strep throat. Yes. I want people mm -hmm. out there running with full-blown AIDS. Right. Well, all right. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was, right. uh, okay. No. Yeah. Um, no, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Well, oh. half-blown. Okay. Half. Quarter. Yeah. Quarter-blown AIDS. Yeah, mm. all right. Maybe. Quades. But no, dealing with adversity is so much part of the military that if you eliminate that from the very first day they walk into the military you gotta you're, have some things that are difficult yeah you're, it's you're, a difficult you're going to fight wars right like if you're not you didn't have recruit crud you're a pussy you're not i don't want fucking marine recruits sitting on the ground at a pediatrician doing the little block thing that's on the roller yes. coaster track man right. those were great though yeah. great. that was I, the best i have one show those but for adults yeah. yes mm -hmm. need it mm -hmm. uh-huh show to dentist there should be a, an app party. on your phone Ooh. where like you have finger. to go and you have to get it where without touching the other one and like yes. interact oh mm -hmm. that would be fun i love that mm -hmm. game Definitely about. not as good as my full body sunscreen tattoo idea. Yes. No, not as good. Did you hear that one? No. Oh. So I think that they should develop a sunscreen that you get tattooed on. Whoa. Where it's like a layer of UV protection and it's just tattooed. No, that would take or if they could dunk you like Achilles into a big permanent vat of sunscreen. Okay. And the only thing that you have to constantly do is your Achilles tendon. Okay. That's oh. <laughs> this stem oh, from got dip, this right. stem yeah. from because I said I, I know it doesn't work like this, but you look at Chaps and he's got all of these tattoos, that should protect him from the sun, even though I know it a doesn't. A tattooed sun shirt is basically what we're saying. Yes. Okay. All right. And that's how we become billionaires and have generational wealth. Because if you huh. think about it, you're, let's say you're 19, and it's like, all right, Kate, for twenty thousand dollars, you'll never get sunburned again. I kind of like getting sunburned. Do you? Well, because then I can yeah. a, a light get tell me the uh, light sunburn down the Jersey Shore. Well, that I think you could still you allow shower, that. It depends no on what kind of hour, level you're, you're picking. A little bit. Uh. But what about when you're beat ass red? Yeah. No offense to your diet. What if you're beat right. ass red, and then you have? Do you get sun blisters? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I get mm -hmm. sun blisters too. Do you? Mm -hmm. That shit's the Started worst. Started getting them right? after yeah. my Tijuana spring break trip. I don't know <laughs> what that was all about. <laughs> I started getting uh, them after boot camp. There's nothing there was worse. one recruit that had full blown red. AIDS. <laughs> and I was like, "There's nothing worse than a full blown sunburn." <laughs> Two AIDS jokes, folks. <laughs> Round number three. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. So I think ultimately, I don't like this. I don't like this because also I think that two week period, you could tell them everything there is to know about the Marine Corps, what it's going to be like, and, and any branch for that matter, and what to expect. You don't really understand it till you start going through it. So that two weeks is almost useless. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that. And another AIDS point. Mm. Jeez. They have a vaccine. Yes. Do you see that? They've made a lot of incredible developments there. And that vaccine came about from coronavirus. Wow. wow. Because they use the same type of technology, the mRNA technology, and they applied it to the HIV trials. And it is apparently it's at like a 98, 99 percentile of effectiveness so if that works then they can roll this out too and people can be vaccinated from hiv wow well, it's easy to see how vaccines are a good thing speaking of round number three <laughs> mm -hmm. we're talking about glasses my friends mm. all right what's your your vision chaps your glasses are ridiculously I, thick and i have a confession to make about my own medical stuff okay yeah. i have zero idea what my vision is same <laughs> i have no idea what medication i'm on yep same. my wife picks it up from like I make her sit in with me with the actual like nurse practitioner psychologist person yeah psychiatrist and he tells her what I'm going to be taking and I'm like does that sound right and she's like yes sure like does. that's the way you should be yeah. and then I just have a pill bottle that's like Monday Wednesday Thursday oh, Friday, yeah, you just take oh, yeah. and whatever's in there it could be arsenic 
I'll never know. Fuck it. Yeah, I don't it's, care. It's I don't care. Whatever Tuesday, it is, I'm taking that. And I've never it understood is. prescriptions. All are you those 2020? numbers. Yeah. Cons? Yeah. Of course he is. God damn it. What are you? So perfect. I'm blind as a bat. I can't see shit. Mm-mm. Yep. Anyway, sucks, sucks. I like it that way, though. I look good. I look good in the mirror that way. I actually am thankful I have to wear glasses. Look how raccoon-faced I am without a glasses now. Yeah, I think that's just because we're so used to you yeah. glasses. Oh, no, it's not. I used to be uh. handsome, like, without glasses. Oh, you're still so And handsome. now my, I think because I wear these so often, it gives you, like, bags. Hold your face Can down. I tell you, you something? You know what Alex eyes. said? What? In addition to what a lovely time she had spending with the both of you, she was looking through your Instagram. She's like, oh, I don't understand, chaps. He's so handsome with no beard. Not now. Well, oh, maybe now because I've lost like thirty lost pounds. Some weight. <laughs> you should try it again. You're in Give New York City. Give it a go. Last time you shaved Did your I beard. tell you how I lost weight? No. no. I lost weight because I moved. And oh, yeah, because stretch. my new office. Oh, you did tell, yeah, tell me about my this. My new yes. office is so far below the kitchen. You're not, not grazing anymore. I'm not going up three oh, flights of stairs to get to the kitchen. That's a good thing. I'm just not doing it. I love that's it. how I've lost weight. That and swimming, playing football on the diving board mm -hmm. it looks like your eyes aren't on the snacks anymore speaking of <laughs> round number three god damn see, it she, she hates this god she hates damn this damn i knew it she hates this huh. meanwhile the tangents we go on are gonna make us so much money and you're gonna mm -hmm. thank us later mm -hmm. from david rosa a task of purpose mm. it's great to hear that somebody's actually getting a good night's sleep but who knew it would be aboard an active duty nuclear submarine that seems to have been the case for 42 lucky sailors aboard the USS Vermont, powered by uh, maple syrup. I don't. I don't <laughs> that was a good joke. Go. I don't like the fact that we name stuff after states. No. It's already a state. Yes, right. th th that's already a great accolade to have an entire mass of land. You can't have name that. something after something that's named I for don't something. Embarrass yes, you, but Charles Vermont's a famous sailor. I know. I just they made gave that up. Vermont I just already. Made that up. I they just gave, made well, that up. Well, you know, whoever it is, Vermont is that. Uh, who is Vermont named after? Somebody. Vermont? <laughs> yeah. Some French the dude. Some Frenchy? Some French dude who <laughs> did something <laughs> great <laughs> along the way sometime. It's me, state. Armand. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is my ship. It's a USS Armand. <laughs> Anyways, 42 lucky sailors aboard the USS Armand. <laughs> what are we having? Cordon Bleu? <laughs> <laughs> They don't call them hamsters down there. Suck it up there. It's a hamster. Oh, <laughs> le petit fromage. Uh, that's the tiny cheese, by the way. Anyways, in November, these 42 sailors took awesome, part. Awesome. Before you keep going, oh my it's God. bullshit <laughs> that the name Ratatouille is yes. not Remy. That's Remy is the actual rat. And people forget that. That's mm. a, The mouse is named Remy, right, not yeah, Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Anyways, these 42 <laughs> sailors above the submarine took part Long in a special <laughs> uh, study where they Remy. put on special glasses called personal light treatment devices to try and get into a better sleep rhythm. Cool. We'll get back to that. Okay. The state's name comes from two French words, vert for green, mont for mountain, which explains Vermont's nickname, the Green Mountain State. That's fucking beautiful. So I like two Vermont. French now, words. Now I'm fine with it because Vermont's not named after something. It's named after a thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's still a noun, but it's not a proper noun. Correct. Despite the glasses but resemblance now it is. to the Munchline birth control glasses <laughs> issued to service members for decades, the study was a success, and many sailors want to keep wearing the ugly-ass glasses even after the study is over. The do you PL sell those in Brooklyn? Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, do you guys have these in clear frames? The PLTDs are inexpensive, unobtrusive, and if they prove to be an effective countermeasure to circadian misalignment among submariners during That's crickets. underway periods. Cicada? The U.S. Yeah, the cicadas, right. Cicada the U.S. Navy <laughs> will have one more option to help sailors get the rest that they need. They notoriously, uh, over the last few years, we've covered stories where sleep deprivation has caused some big time problems and uh, even at death you, for sailors. Mm. Yeah, um, but these glasses look straight out of a high school chemistry class. They are apparently pretty hideous, but they're helping people get their sleep. I don't understand how. I'm looking at this thing right now. So <laughs> they, they emit a blue light, which suppresses the release. Oh, whoa, whoa. hold on. I'm really bad at the uh, podcast, Kate. <laughs> We are looking at our phones and computers and beep boops and buttons all day long. That is true. Lots of beep boops. A lot of beep boops. And they emit this blue light, which suppresses the release of nocturnal melanomin, ah. melatonin, that helps us fall asleep. So 
I didn't know that. Well, I didn't know so staring of, uh, at your phone keeps you up for more than one dude, reason. Dude, why are they acting like they invented this? Big Cat's been fucking selling those ads for years. That's what I was just going to say. Barstool's been partnered up with, I'm sorry, Glasses I'm, I'm that help blanking you. on the name of the, the company, the brand right Not now. Not Warby Parker. No. No. Who is it? Somebody else. Parky Warber. <laughs> yeah, no. Parky Warber. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I guess they're blue light glasses. I'm not going to yeah, read the rest of this article. Stupid. You didn't not invent new. that. Get out of here, Navy. There's so many things that we actually invented yeah, for the military. military blue blockers. Yeah, that's all it is. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. That's not fucking blog worthy. Nobody cares. Felix Gray. Felix Gray, yeah. Felix Gray. That's who we work with. That's like the fucking uh, submarines that are spending $60,000 on a controller when you can plug in an Xbox Xbox controller controller. and it works the same. We're saving the military so much money. By the way, we should mention, you speaking of Brooklyn, speaking of the BCGs, we all know that the Jay-Z head bobbing Uh gift, he's wearing some BCGs. Yeah. He looks great in them. But those are made by Tom Ford. Right. Oh. I made that up. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Tom Ford stuff is But fancy. actually, I actually do think I want to start wearing a pair of glasses that blocks the blue light. You look real smart in them. Yeah. You, would. you look great in glasses, I have to say. So I think I mm. need to uh, get that fired up. Maybe I'll go talk to Big Cat after this. Mm. Well, while we're focusing on the old O-Hos, that's yes. Spanish for eyes. <clears throat> Well, French and Spanish in this show. Mm. Uh, night vision goggles, people. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. There's a new new pair that's out that's making big waves on social media right now because it just looks fucking cool as shit. It does look cool as shit. It really does. The, like there's two there's two that are kind of going around. One where you get outlined where people will get outlined where they look Whoa. like Tron. Dude, I'm looking at it right like now. Like the Tron movie. That is. And this what they did here. Yeah. Yeah, it looks wow. like Tron. But they also have other ones. I I shit you not. I did this in Iraq without even knowing that I was doing this because I had a scope that was for um, what's the fucking huge 50 caliber sniper rifle? Uh, 50 cal sniper rifle? No, but it has an actual name. <laughs> um, Barrett. Like, so I had the yeah. Barrett sniper rifle scope that was thermal, and then I had my actual nods that were just regular night vision goggles. I would put one on my left eye, one on the right, and they mixed together in a yeah. Venn diagram, so I had I could see everything. And I showed my buddy, I was like, look at this shit, dude. You could see a fucking squirrel or whatever Super all the way out there. Right. Like the yeah. thermal vision is incredible. Mm. That's awesome. Well, they've developed this new pair that people are fucking loving. They're enhanced night vision goggle binoculars, ENVGBs. So we God, I'm so tired of fucking, just call <laughs> yeah, it new yeah. night vision goggles. Couple AA batteries and white phosphorus tubes to get rid of the green tint that is in our regular night vision goggles. Uh, apparently it's a game changer when it comes to situational awareness. So a lot of a crisper, clearer view. These White new phosphorus. Uh, Willie P. See, I don't understand. Like the yeah. way that science yeah. works is so insane. Like that you can use white phosphorus as like a serious weapon, or you can use them to see. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Same thing with microwaves. It could be you can essentially burn everything in a city, or you can make popcorn. Right. Well, the other coolest shit thing about these is that there's an overlay that uses augmented reality. So the overlay map graphics and the blue force tracking capabilities, once I'm looking through them or whatever, I can mark these are friendlies over there as enemies. So they show up oh, in a different. That's what they do in like uh, Tom Clancy yes. video games. They show up in a different fucking color. Then. Wow. Yeah. And you can also like do it this. in the Hitman game too. Right. Mm. You're like, oh, he's a friendly. I don't need to kill that guy. Yeah, that's sweet. That would be sick. I mean, that would be awesome from like drones ahead. Yes. Because when I was actually doing combat operations, you could go to certain areas and look above and they'd be like, there's military age males on the roof. And you could look up and see the roof. And then they would be like, not this house. These are friendlies like in three or four houses down. And then they would like try to market where you have like some type of visual representation. Mm -hmm. If you were clicked in with the drone that was overhead and you were a battlefield combatant on the actual ground, and you could look over and they had like a little American flags over them and then the enemy had like non American flags over them, that would be incredible. It'd be sick. Eliminate yeah, a lot sick. of friendly fire. Yeah. I will say Absolutely. It just reminds me of something else I wish was in existence. I'm a sucker for looking at maps. If we could have the same <laughs> Amen sister. Oh, when I'm out on the oh, boat. Yeah. I love Who it. Among us. <laughs> when I'm up in Nantucket yeah. with mother <laughs> What if this weekend we were real bad? Papa, we just got a big thing of haagen sat around side, and looked at maps. What are you doing? I'm going to look at some maps. Yeah. They're real cool. Yeah. You ever heard of topography? I don't Sit. know if you want to maybe come back to my place so we can spread out some maps. See, this is called an inlet. Yeah. 
Maybe anyway. have a little sex, look at some maps. I don't know. It's a plateau. It's uh, uh, That's a evidence. finger, they One call more. it. Hmm. Finger Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's New York. Folks. You look at the map. It's the middle of the state. <laughs> Ithaca. More like it than her. <laughs> So if you're keeping track at home, I'm giving you now freshman on varsity and maps mm -hmm. as new material to use. Huh. Anyway, when you're flying through a plane, I wish there was some sort of overlay through In it the window. Or through it. Excuse me? What did flying, I say? Flying through a plane. No, when you're, on, you're flying on a plane. <laughs> if you're flying through a plane, you're probably a fucking goose. All right, so imagine. You <laughs> had a rough day. Okay? I was flying through a plane, right? It was fucking metal. Here comes metal. Captain Sully fucking. <laughs> no. I'm just trying to fly over the Hudson and get to, uh, um, to a worm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like calling me Captain Siegel. <laughs> anyway. But if you could see through the window and it had an overlay of where you are, mm. I just think that'd be cool because I'm a map guy. Mm -hmm. They do have that, cons. What do you mean? No. Like if you fly on United. Oh, yeah, you could have the flight map. Uh, no, but I'm talking about in. I look out the window and on the ground oh, now. Oh, like there's Whataburger down there? No, I, there's like Google Maps on the ground that I'm looking through and seeing the window. I think you're right, seeing what I I'm always, seeing. Because you always see the little towns and cities. Like, and I'm I like, wonder I what I town knew. that actually is. I love to guess, and I wish I could confirm if I was right or Yes. Not. I've yeah. only been yes. right a couple times, but when you are and oh, you know, it's yep. thrilling. Yes. It's a great feeling. I'd be like, oh, look, Six Flags. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like that's Then I, I try right to find my house. Like, oh, that's the Grand Canyon. Yep. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good one to know. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's move okay. on to safe rounds and alibis. Um, Cons, we'll start with you. Oh, when the new night vision, I just kept thinking of the Take On Me music video. We can't play that for you anymore. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, no, I was just thinking the other day how you say things on a podcast, and it's just like kind of there forever. So I've said some stupid things in the last month. Mm -hmm. You missed out on that, I think. Oh. Yeah, but it's just there forever now. There'll be more. Yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, but that got me thinking. What do you think is the most spoken word? And taking out like prepositions and everything like that. What word do you think is spoken the most? Current day. Because obviously it would be different if it was 100 years ago. But current day, the most spoken word. And, and not like was, filler words, like words that if you're writing like a article no, title. that no would, prepositions. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. prepositions, but no conjunctions. No mom, or, so. yeah. mom or dad in any language. Okay. That's pretty good. That'd be a good one. Uh, food might be up there. Food's probably up there for sure. Yeah. There's no way the to answer? no. There's no oh. way to know this oh. answer. I bet there is. Maybe, yeah. but I just want to know what you all think. What it, What do you think is the most spoken word? I would say if you include every language, mom and dad would be way way up there. Yeah, and God, like some God or something. God maybe, know. but you got to think about like how much on your on, during your daily day activities mm -hmm. do you say mom and dad? This is probably more than other words. Now you I do. Come yeah. To mama. yeah, true. I do. I speak in the third person. Do you call true. yourself mom, mama, or mommy? Mama. Mama's the best Mama's one. Mama's coming over. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to think about that. All right. I have a question that I posed last night, or that I not posed, but I thought of last night, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. All right. So in a day, you get 11 seconds only. You only get 11 seconds. Mm hmm to do one of these three tasks. Whoa. And you can't do the other task if you pick one. Which one would you pick? Wiping, you only get 11 seconds all day long to wipe. So if your you ass? go multiple times, you're- Yeah, okay. you only get, okay. and then after you after you do it- you Use your 11 seconds, you're that's not, it. You're, you're not allowed to. Okay. So you wipe, brush your teeth, or shower. Oh, what? I never, I listen, I've barely been brushing my teeth these days, people, ever. It's like, I get done the day. Betterhelp.com. When you guys came over yesterday, I was like, let me slip away and brush my teeth for a second here. My goodness, company. Um, yeah, I do remember that whenever you were setting up the podcast last time. You told Pat I haven't brushed my teeth in a while. Yeah, it's the one thing I forget to do. The day just goes by, and I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't brush my teeth today. Yeah, class five, yuck mouth. Hmm. Um, so not that. And, and now that I'm wiping two asses. Myself and a oh, baby ass. I was like, what happened? To you? I heard about your tank. You you gained an extra butthole? Uh, well, yes. But also, <laughs> uh, but True. yeah. So I'm like three assholes, really. Mm. Mm. Pat? Mm. <laughs> okay. No. But. Mm. That'd be sick. Yeah. Like, there is that element of, like, you want to believe that your significant other will stand by you no matter what. I don't want Annalise wiping my ass. Like, if something drastic well, happens to me. Well, that's what and stuff are for now. Yeah. You know? Or what if you just have like a butt bucket? 
Right. <laughs> butt bucket. Yeah, a six pack. TM. <laughs> yeah. Just, you butt just stick it TM. in there, and it swirls around like a butt dishwasher. The hospital gave me a handheld bidet thing, the squeezer bottle with like an L-shaped squeezer or whatever. Yeah. And I actually use it on when I give my son a bath. I get in the little crevices of his neck and armpits and hands and toes with it. Where he's keeping his Big Macs warm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going wiping because right. I think you're gonna pick wiping. Yes, because I think you're crazy brushing wiping. your teeth. Maybe you could mouthwash throughout the day, and without showering, you could use some dude wipes and keep yourself yeah. relatively clean. So I think you got to go wiping because otherwise you're just creating a you're world of problems for butt. yourself. Nobody wants that. No. Yeah. Okay. Something to think about. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Kate? Uh... <laughs> 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 All right. Make sure you go to the YouTube to subscribe to that. We're going to be putting a video of Cons playing football as a freshman yep. on there. And it'll be nice. You'll enjoy that. Until yeah. then, we'll see you guys on Friday. It's on the retreat.